Hi friends, I'm Kitty and welcome to Little Wattle Nursery. I'm an adult doll collector that creates content that aims to encourage fun and positivity in our hobby. You are never too old for dolls and never too old for a hobby you love. So stick around and have some dolly fun. Welcome friends to Topic Tuesday. If you're new here around once a month or so, I do a big deep dive into various interesting doll hobby topics. My gorgeous partial silicon doll Felicity is here with me today and you can see she's quite dusty. She's very, very overdue. <laughs> for an outfit change and powder and I'm going to have to clean her little basket because that's quite dusty as well so it's it's a bit of a maintenance day today and I also wanted to take this opportunity to do a shout out for my lovely dolly friend Mel from Melamore Nursery channel uh, she hosts a really fun weekly theme called Silicon Doll Saturday so make sure you head over to her channel. I'll put a link in the description box so that you can head straight over there and show your support. For those new to my channel, Felicity is the all dolled up Olivia baby doll sculpted by master artist Linda Murray and she was manufactured by Ashton Drake Galleries. I'm going to show you her COA. So there's her COA. She's been made with True Touch Authentic Silicone and that's a registered trademark for Ashton Drake Galleries. Inside her COA on the left-hand side, there is information about Linda Murray. She is a wonderful sculptor. She's one of my favourite sculptors. And also on the right-hand side are some care instructions on how to display and care for a silicon doll. And here you can see on the back, here is the COA that says that she's the all dolled up Olivia. She's the original issue. And it says on this COA that when the issue is retired, when this edition is retired, it's never going to be reopened again. Here's another little certificate that she comes with. And I actually received this in the post. This was how I ordered her. So Ashton Drake Gallery sent me this beautiful brochure when she was first released. And there's all the details about the doll and the master artist. There was some more information here. Beautiful pamphlet and then there's this life-size poster it's absolutely stunning apparently you are supposed to separate your silicon dolls from your vinyl dolls and so I actually purchased this beautiful basket also from Ashton Drake Galleries and this is Felicity's little special home so today I plan to show you all of Felicity's lovely details and I'm also going to share with you what scares me about silicon art dolls. Honestly, there are some things about silicon art dolls that scare the living daylights out of me. And some of my viewers might be thinking, so what do I mean by silicon art dolls? Well, they are silicon dolls that are hand poured by sculptors and hand painted by reborn artists. And this doll isn't one of those. <laughs> it's been uh, designed by a sculptor, but it's actually been manufactured by 
Ashton Drake Galleries. I have the sweetest little dress or outfit that I'm going to dress her into today. She really suits pink, so I'm going to keep her in the colour pink. And I absolutely love this little dress. My gorgeous friend in Brazil hand makes these beautiful dresses. So it's floral. I think this is perfect in spring for my lovely dolly friends in the Northern Hemisphere. I thought this would be nice and cheerful. There is this beautiful panel at the front here with eyelet details and the three little rosettes. Super cute. There's lace trim on the front panel, on the sleeves and down the bottom of the dress. It's a simple button up. You can see who this is made by. My lovely dolly friend on Instagram, Tammy's Doll Boutique. As I said, I'll put a link down in the description box if you want to go and check out her page. There's these gorgeous little panties to suit, to match, and this really sweet headband. So that's what she's going to be getting dressed into today. So this is the matting powder that I'm going to use on her today. It's called Silicon Velvet. And... I always dispense some in a smaller container. There's the lovely little brush that I'm going to use. And although the product states that it's harmless, I always wear a mask prior to using the product just for extra protection because it is a silicon powder. I think it's been at least six months since this little girl has been powdered and our neighbour has been doing this very long extension for over two years. And the dust that comes from next door, although we try and keep our house sealed up, the dust still manages to get through. And unfortunately, poor little <laughs> Felicity has been suffering the consequences. So every three to six months, I'm having to powder her. And I wouldn't normally do it that often, but it's just because of the work that's been going on next door but as I'm undressing Felicity you can see she's a she's a partial silicon doll this is the original as you can see the original outfit that she came in I'm going to go over that with a roller brush before I um, redress her back into it later on because this is actually her nursery outfit I like her in this outfit in the nursery so when she's not starring on YouTube I actually have her in her original outfit but I'll have to dust this one off but as I mentioned before um, it's she's made with the Ashton Drake Gallery's True Touch Authentic Silicone this silicone is a registered trademark and the silicone it has a really soft and supple feeling of real skin and it's it's gorgeous it's gorgeous to touch and this doll has also been delicately handcrafted and painted by skilled artisans that work in the factory where she was made so she's been subtly hand painted you can see that she's got these sweet rosy cheeks um, she's got beautiful blushing on the hands and the elbows and the knees and also the feet. I'll take her shoes off because I'm going to need to powder those as well. And she's got these beautiful, tiny little manicured fingernails and toenails. So they've been hand painted as well. And this beautiful um wispy baby soft hair that's been hand rooted one strand at a time so it's actually mono rooted and i purchased this doll back in 2020 as i said from ashton drake galleries or what we call the bradford exchange in in australia for uh 299 australian 
and for an authentic manufactured partial silicon doll, I mean, I think that really represents excellent value, really good value. Now, what really impresses me about this doll is her quality and how good she looks considering how much I've dressed and played with her. Over the years, I have changed this doll's clothes countless times and I've brushed her hair over and over again. Like when I first got this doll, I was obsessed with her and it was during lockdown. So I was playing with her every single day and changing and playing and all the rest. And look, she still looks as good as the day that I purchased her. So after having, you know, years of such a positive experience with my manufactured silicon doll, I actually decided late last year it was an ideal time to start seriously looking at what I initially thought would be upgrading to an expensive handmade silicon art doll. You know, one where an artist has poured and reborn it. So I'm sorry if I'm starting to sound a little bit muffly. That's because I've got the mask on. I'll try and speak as clearly as I possibly can with it on whilst I'm doing the powdering. So in Australia, a full body silicon doll uh, an authentic one generally starts at a price guide of around four to five thousand dollars. Double that amount if I was to purchase one from overseas, say from America, the UK, or Europe, because the Australian dollar trades very weak compared to other currencies around the world. So when you think about it, that's actually. That's a massive, that's a massive investment. It really is because when you, when you realistically think about it, that type of money, four or five thousand dollars or more, can buy a reasonably good secondhand car. So obviously before biting the bullet and purchasing an expensive silicon art doll, I did a ton of research and to be honest, I'm actually so relieved that I did because to my surprise, I actually discovered some rather concerning reoccurring quality issues with these silicon art dolls. Now, although artist rendered silicon art dolls are by far, by far more realistic looking than, say, my manufactured Ashton Drake Galleries doll, at this stage, I've decided I'm opting out of purchasing a silicon art doll until I can see more consistency in the industry. A lot would need to change before I would actually consider investing in one. Now, please don't take this the wrong way because there are clearly many, many talented sculptors and reborn artists in the industry around the world who produce absolutely stunning work, beautiful work. However, in the last year or so, what really concerns me is that I'm seeing a rise in collectors who are openly expressing online that they are experiencing a raft of issues with their silicon dolls. So as I mentioned, I recently spent several months doing a lot of research about silicon art dolls, which included watching lots of box opening videos. And I also reached out to some of my silicon doll collectors, both here in Australia and overseas, to seek their advice. And after hearing them raise various issues, I'm actually basically too scared to buy one. So my advice to anyone considering making a huge investment into silicon art dolls, I really encourage you to first do a lot of research before purchasing. Take your time before handing over your hard-earned money because there are some real scammers out there and what they're getting away with is just, it's, it's disgusting. So today I'm going to share with you what types of issues have been brought to my attention and I'll also provide some advice on how to potentially resolve those issues. 
And I'm also going to provide a list of useful questions you should be asking before investing in an really expensive, authentic silicon art doll. Now, the first point that I want to address right off the bat is that there are silicon doll collectors in our community. And I'm not talking about a specific country. I'm talking about the community from a global perspective. They're, these are people who are sitting in silence suffering. Suffering in silence because they have paid huge money for brand new silicon art dolls which have either arrived in their box opening with issues or only a couple of months later are presenting with issues that I would consider to be major. In the last about six months or so, I've seen a rise in box opening videos on YouTube where you can clearly see with your own two eyes that some silicon dolls are arriving in their box opening with issues. That's concerning. I actually found this content not only disturbing, but really upsetting to watch. You know, this is a friend that's paid a huge amount of money for a doll. They've been waiting sometimes a long time, up to a year, to receive that doll and to open it and you can instantly see issues. It's just, it's devastating. So I decided to uh, reach out to some of those collectors to personally ask them what they'd done about rectifying the issues because they often didn't discuss those details on the on the on their channel or during the box opening and surprisingly their responses were similar every single one of those collectors had contacted their artist about the issues they were having but from what i could gather they were basically being gaslit with a, a raft of really poor excuses personally i thought they were quite poor now one collector whose silicon doll arrived with a malformed hand that's right a malformed hand was told by the artist to just put a mitten on the hand really that's the best solution you can come up with for a doll that's cost my friend five thousand dollars other collectors who i spoke with who had experienced paint seal or matting issues shortly after receiving their dolls were told by their reborn artists that they do not do repairs and these collectors were left with the responsibility of having to find another artist willing to fix their dolls some collectors indicated that it took them many months to find another artist willing to do the work because as we know, most artists generally won't fix another artist's work. And if these collectors managed to secure an artist, the repairs were at an additional cost. I know one who paid $500 or so for, for repairs. Now, before anyone offers the excuse that the peeling is only due to rough handling, I can assure you, that I saw no rough handling whatsoever from these collectors in their videos. And they, they'd only changed their doll's outfits a couple of times since their arrival and had displayed their dolls appropriately in their own cradle. So as far as I'm concerned, to be paying that type of money and receiving a doll that deteriorates so quickly afterwards is not only unacceptable, here in Australia, that type of inferior quality, that does not comply with consumer laws. In Australia, by law, you cannot sell products or services that are not fit for purpose. I was totally mortified when one collector advised that they paid the full amount up front for their silicon art doll and then waited over a year to receive it. Again, in Australia, that type of business practice would be investigated under Australian consumer law. And I'm actually going to speak more on that topic and other consumer rights later in this video. So further issues that were also brought to my attention, for example, artists who were engaged to fix another artist's work reported to the collector that they were dealing with that they were having difficulties fixing their dolls 
most likely due to either inferior paint or incorrect products previously been used to paint, seal or mat the dolls. I mean, honestly, this is, I just find that disturbing to be spending that kind of money and that kind of shonky work is happening. That just fills me with, with absolute horror. And what also really concerns me is when I hear from doll collectors who've been persistent about sending their dolls back for repairs, explaining that they were often either blamed by the artist or just given the runaround or simply told that the artist does not have time to do the repairs. I actually spoke with quite a few collectors who ended up backing down in fear of being bullied and black banned in the community by the particular artist that they purchased their silicon art doll from. However, I know of a couple of brave souls who have soldiered on and they've continued to be bullied in the process. I'm actually currently following one silicon doll collector who has experienced all sorts of issues, ordering from an overseas reborn artist, Honestly, after watching the box opening for that doll, that artist should hang her head in shame. The reality is the camera does not lie and everyone who watched that collector's box opening video could clearly see the issues with her doll. The collector at the time actually didn't say very much during the box opening and you know, I'm guessing she was probably as shocked as we were watching it all unfold. Um, another collector I know is being bullied on Facebook by somebody that she has never met or dealt with. And they are a Silicon Reborn artist, not the one that she was dealing with, but they took offence to a video she uploaded on her channel where she spoke about having to send her doll back or, or her doll to be resealed and matted only after a couple of months she didn't send it back to the artist she sent it back she sent it to someone else and the bully who is a reborn artist or you know reborns these silicon dolls went as far as creating a post and sharing it in various facebook groups absolutely ridiculing this collector stating to others that if her silicon doll was peeling, that she needed to learn how to reseal the doll herself and to stop bothering the artist. Now, honestly, that takes the cake. That has to be the dumbest comment made on the internet that day. Most collectors, we're not artists. Therefore, we should not be expected, first of all, to know how to do an artist's job. And second of all, collectors pay artists a handsome amount of money to have their silicon dolls completed correctly the first time. Another cause for alarm is when talking to others in the community is that they have heard there are some artists that are adding an additive to their silicone in order to stretch the silicone to produce more dolls. And apparently this additive is also contributing towards peeling issues. They've also heard that some artists um, use an oven to cure their silicon paint so that it can dry in 20 minutes and they don't have to wait the usual two to four hours minimum for the paint to naturally dry. And apparently this too can compromise the long-term durability of the paint and the silicon. So at this point in time, with what I've been seen and told, I now actually have a really negative perception of the silicon art doll industry. And I'm sure I'm not alone. And what concerns me the most is that it looks like the number of scammers who are cutting corners with their work is growing. Another area that concerns me is this culture of bullying collectors who decide to come forward and speak their truth about their silicon experiences. Honestly, this needs to stop. The only way to keep improving the professionalism of the silicon art industry is to successfully weed out the scammers by exposing them. What is completely hypocritical is this culture within the reborn community where bullying and shaming 
is disguised as education in regards to addressing consumers who purchase dolls made from Chinese replicated kits. However, for those sculptors or reborn artists who are producing inferior work, the consumer, the collector, is immediately blamed and at fault. So how can you better protect yourself when purchasing a silicon doll? As I mentioned before, you will need to do a lot of research like I did and ask many questions. As a starting point, I would find which sculptor's silicon work most appeal to you, check their website or where they sell their silicon dolls to find out what type of silicone they use. If the sculptor does not paint their own work, find which silicon artists you admire and then approach others in the community who have who've purchased a doll through that artist and ask them the following questions. I'm going to put the questions up on screen and I'll um, talk about them out loud as well. Okay, question number one. How long have you had the doll in your collection? Question two. Did you receive the doll in good order on arrival? Question number three. What is your favourite feature about the doll question number four did the artist provide you with a date of completion for the doll question number five did the actual completion date differ from the original date and if so by how much question number six do you like the way the artist has painted your silicon doll question number seven did the artist root the hair if so, do you like the way the hair has been rooted? Question number eight. If the artist did not root the hair, will they find an artist to do it or will you need to? Question number nine. Have you experienced any paint, seal or matting issues? If so, how long after receiving the doll? Question number ten. Would you have another doll painted by the same artist? Question number 11. Does the artist offer an after service if the doll requires any fixing or ongoing maintenance? And question number 12. Do they offer a payment plan and what are the payment terms? Now, before approaching an artist, you should also do an extensive background check on them because you want to make sure that they're actually running a legitimate business. And I'm going to discuss later in this video how you can effectively do a background check. Now, once you are satisfied with your background checking, there are some questions that you can ask the artist painting your silicon doll. And I'm going to pop those questions up on screen and I'll also discuss them out loud. So question number one, what type of silicon is the doll made of? Number two, what brand of paints do you use to paint and seal your dolls? Question number three, do you root the doll's hair? If so, what type of hair do you use and what method do you use, e.g. mono root or micro root, etc.? Question number four, if you do not root the doll's hair, Will you find someone to do it or will I need to? Question number five, can I choose the hair and eye colour? Question number six, will the doll require any ongoing maintenance such as repainting, resealing and matting? And if so, approximately how often will this need to be done and how much will it approximately cost? Question number seven, what is the date of completion for the doll? Question number eight, what are your payment terms? Question number nine, do you offer any after service? For example, if the doll arrives with any issues, will you fix those issues? Who is responsible for paying shipping and customs if the doll has been purchased from overseas and needs to be returned? Question number 10, do you fully insure the doll for shipping? So prior to placing an order with the artist, you should check that the payment terms they've provided you with and their after service arrangements comply with what consumer rights you're entitled to in your country. 
And if you find they don't, ding, 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 it's a red flag to find another artist. In addition, if the artist does not issue you with an official quote, an invoice or receipts, it's important that you keep a really good paper trail of the conversations that you have with them and all the payments made to them in the event that there are any issues and you need to take legal action through the small claims court. So in an ideal situation, by conducting these appropriate background checks, you should be able to find your preferred artist and have a really positive purchasing experience. But what happens if you don't have a positive experience? Perhaps you feel that your artist is being unreasonable or unapproachable or maybe you've been totally scammed. Well, grab a cup of tea, Dolly friends, and stay with me for the next part of this video where I will explore your consumer rights and protection options and how to conduct a background check on a business. In this second part of the video, I'm now going to discuss what consumer protection rights we have available here in Australia, noting that if you live in another country, you will need to check what your rights are in your own country with the appropriate bodies. So obviously the first step to resolve any quality issues with your silicon doll is to first contact the artist directly and explain the problem. And it's best to do it in writing to formalise the process and to also include any photos as evidence that are applicable. And in Australia, the artist by law cannot refuse to help you. I'm just going to let that digest for a moment. <laughs> um, if you find yourself in a position where you have exhausted all negotiating options with your artist and you've checked online and you can see that the artist is not complying with basic consumer rights and protections, the next step is in Australia is to report the issue to the ACCC. So in Australia, we have excellent laws to protect um, consumers and the government body that is responsible is the ACCC, which stands for the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. And anyone, any citizen can make a report to the ACCC about an issue under consumer law, and they will use your report to inform their education compliance and enforcement teams. And I've put a link down in the description box below if you're interested in checking out more about the ACCC. But in a nutshell, in Australia, we have certain basic automatic consumer rights and guarantees that must be met when businesses sell their products and services. And under Australian consumer law, these basic rights are called consumer guarantees and it is unlawful for businesses to mislead consumers and their rights. So in Australia... Basic rights covered by consumer guarantees, they cannot be taken away um, by anything a business says or does. For example, a business cannot take away a basic right by displaying a no refunds sign or otherwise saying that refunds are not available at all or not available after a certain amount of days. Having said that, consumers can't demand a refund just because they've changed their mind about a product or service. In Australia, it is against the law for businesses to mislead consumers about their rights. For example, businesses cannot say to their customers that they are not responsible for the pro problems with a product or service they have provided. In Australia, when buying a product, a consumer also has the right to expect by law a number of things which include um, acceptable quality. So products should have an acceptable finish, safe and, and free from defects. The product must be fit for purpose. I mentioned that previously. The description must be accurate and match any associated online images or in you know brochures and catalogues, that type of thing. And any extra promises that the business has made about the product must be met. 
And when a consumer buys a product, the manufacturer or importer must provide spare parts and repair facilities for a reasonable time after the purchase. Uh, the Australian consumer uh, also has full ownership of the product. And in Australia, if you receive a product or service that does not meet one of the consumer guarantees, you can claim a remedy. And depending on the situation, it may be to repair, to receive a replacement, to be issued a refund, or the option to cancel an order if it is taking too long to be made. In Australia, services must be uh, supplied in a reasonable time, even if there's no time frame otherwise agreed. Now, what is reasonable will depend on the nature of the service and other relevant factors such as availability of parts and materials. If items are readily in stock, there is simply no excuse for delays. In Australia, the seller can offer you a refund for a minor problem. However, if the problem is major, the customer has the option to choose a refund and the seller must not refuse or insist that the customer accept a credit note, exchange card or replacement. If a customer is offered a replacement, the replacement must be of the same type of value. If no replacement is offered, a repair or refund must be offered. All the consumer guarantees that applied to the original goods will also apply to the replacement goods. And in Australia, you're also entitled to compensation if your product gets damaged during shipping or if it gets lost during transit. Also worth noting is that when you buy a doll from an artist in Australia, you enter into a contract with them for the goods, which is the doll. It may be a written agreement or an oral agreement or a combination of both. If the artist breaches the conditions of the agreement, this results in a contractual dispute and although a breach is not a criminal matter, the contract is enforceable by civil action taken through the Small Claims Court. So in Australia, if you do not resolve any ongoing issues with the artist who made your silicon doll, you can take them to the Small Claims Court. And if you are having issues, if you're one of these people sitting there suffering in silence, I encourage you to contact your local law society in your state or territory to find out the process to make an application to the courts. Also worth mentioning is that goods purchased online in Australia are covered by consumer guarantees. When an overseas business sells directly to consumers in Australia, that overseas business must follow the Australian consumer law, including the guarantees. However, and this is a big however, in practice, it can be extremely difficult to get a repair, replacement or refund from an overseas biz business if there is a problem with the product or service and the help provided from Australian protection agencies is limited. If you cannot resolve a problem with an overseas artist, you should contact the Consumer Protection Agency where the artist is based to ask if they can help you. So I'm now going to move on to discussing how to do a business background check on an artist that you are considering purchasing a silicon doll from. And I'm going to provide you with the steps that you can take to confirm that you are dealing with a legitimate business. When you are doing a background check on an artist, the first thing that you really need to determine when purchasing any type of doll is, are you dealing with a proper business or some shady scammer making a quick buck whilst avoiding paying their tax? It's actually pretty easy to do a background check to find out. First things first, there is a huge difference between running a business or a hobby. With a hobby, the individual gifts or sells their work for the cost of the materials and there is generally no profit made. In Australia, you do not have to report income earned from a hobby. Having said that, 
the Australian Taxation Office will need to be notified if your earnings are over $18,200. Generally, when you're trading in a business, you are making an income from performing work that is repetitive with the intention of earning an income and making a profit. And under this arrangement, you're required by law to register your business name if your business name is different to your Australian citizen's name. So, for example, if your legal citizen's name is Mary Jones, you do not need to register your business name. If you want the name of your business to be something different, for example, Precious Reborn Nursery, you will be required to register that business name and you may also be required to apply for an, an, an ABN, which is an Australian business number, for GST purposes. And that's a goods and services tax that we have here in Australia. In addition, as per the Business Names Registration Act of 2011, Australian citizens are legally required to register their business name with ASIC and ASIC is the Australian Securities and Investment Commission. It's actually an offence in Australia to conduct a business under an unregistered business name and ASIC actually has the power to take regulatory action on individuals breaching that law. It's actually very simple to do a background check on a business to see if they've registered their business name with ASIC and I have included a link down in the description box to a website that has a database where you can verify. For my overseas viewers, you should have something similar in your own country. Now, most reputable Australian businesses will also have They'll have a strong online presence, including a website advertising their products and services. It is definitely worthwhile checking to see if the artist you are considering placing an order with is transparent online with their products and services and that they actually have a proper online presence. Not just a Facebook account because, you know, lots of scammers can loom around on, on Facebook and some of these social media platforms, as we all know too well. Now, the ACCC advises that Australian consumers should not purchase products and services from businesses that are unregistered. So if you discover that your artist, that your considering placing an order with is operating an unregistered business. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> this is a major red flag to avoid doing business with them. Now I'm going to move on to discussing what you can do if you find yourself in that situation where you didn't do all the appropriate background checking before selecting your artist and you're now having quality issues with your doll. Just follow the steps I've previously discussed to do the appropriate background checking on your artist and find out online what your basic rights and protections are. So after going through that process, if you are concerned that you've entered into a contract with an individual who is potentially operating under an unregistered business name, the next step is to report it to ASIC who will contact the artist to remind them of their legal obligations. And in some cases, they will take further regulatory action. For my overseas viewers, you will have similar authorities that you can contact in your own country. And likewise, if you're concerned that you may have entered into a contract with an artist who is potentially not declaring their taxable income, you can confidentially report their business activities to the Australian Taxation Office. You will need to provide the Australian Taxation Office with all the relevant documentation for your business transaction with the artist, as well as any evidence available online that suggests that they are running a cash business. For example, a link to the artist's Facebook business page that provides photo evidence of all the dolls made by the artist during a particular financial year. As briefly mentioned earlier, the tax-free threshold in Australia 
is currently $18,200. And what that means is that individuals can earn up to this amount in a financial year before they're liable to pay tax. So the first $18,200 is tax-free, but it is taxed progressively on any income above that amount. It is really important to note that the number of jobs an individual has is not relevant, but how much they earn overall in the financial year. Now, all Australians are required by law to inform the tax office of any additional income made from running a business. Um, it is against the law to avoid paying tax. And if you're found guilty of tax evasion, the maximum penalty is 200 penalty units or two years imprisonment or both. So in the case of corporations or businesses, that fine can actually be quite significant. And the final step in reporting any basic consumer rights and protections your artist is not complying with is to the ACCC. By following through all the correct channels, it's very likely that at some point, it will be suggested to you to file through the small claims court if the matter cannot be resolved effectively. And I've included links to all three organisations that I've spoken about in the description box below. So that's the ACCC, ASIC and the Australian Taxation Office. So that's a wrap on the discussion topic and the valid reasons why I'm actually too scared of buying one of these silicon art dolls. If you've had any positive experiences with purchasing a silicon art doll, I would love to hear about your experience in the comments section below, as would others. So please share your artist recommendations so that others can share the same positive experience that you've had. Well, sh this little Felicity is looking so adorable. Let's do the final once-over of her outfit. Wow, look how pretty Felicity looks in this outfit. It is so beautiful. Here's the lovely headband. Coming down, looking at all these pretty spring floral details. Oh, I hope my dolly friends in the Northern Hemisphere are enjoying this. <laughs> and I've just popped her little shoes and socks on that she came with from the factory they just fit her so well so felicity is now back in her beautiful little crib thank you everyone for joining me and i look forward to seeing you in my next video bye everyone bye for now